Yeah, I promised you uh, that uh, I would be doing this second part of the lecture from the Institute uh, using the live equipment uh, that we have there. And uh, well, I spent one and a half hours and afterwards it uh, turned out that the sound was completely garbled, garbage. And uh, so I had to delete everything. And so you soon see me again in my home office. I know I'll also be doing the second part of this lecture from home. Okay, um, so I will show you a second example, which is slightly more mathematical. Um, I'm preparing you. This is not the type of problems that we will be looking at in the lecture. There we will rather be looking at medical images. Um, and medical reconstruction, which also has mathematically a slightly different flavor. But uh, this one is very easy, very simple to understand. And uh, it also shows that we will employ techniques from quite a lot of mathematical fields. And uh, in this um, small lecture, it will be, I will take some elements from partial differential equations and from functional analysis. Okay, the, um, uh, the problem that I'm looking at is simply take a picture of a scene. Um, I hope you can see the scene like this photo man, this camera man over here. And uh, um, you had, uh, by the way, um, they, um, I'm taping this with the university's video system. Uh, which usually shows me the same size as uh, the the screen, which is probably on the left. Uh, and um, uh, you can enlarge the other one. You can enlarge the screen. Uh, you can also delete my in my picture completely. I mean, this is just I'm, I'm not showing you anything here, so you can completely uh, delete the image and just look at uh, the the screen like like my, uh, the screen that i'm sharing with you okay uh, so this is the scene that we're looking at a cameraman and you're taking a photo and you do something wrong uh, you get the distance wrong and uh, if you get the distances wrong then what will happen is you will get a blurred image and what is a blurred image well that image is going to look something like this right um so an immediate question that you would have is, can we somehow get back from this blurred image to the original image? We will see that there are many ways of actually doing that. But um, there is also a quite nice one which, in, uh, which employs partial differential equations. And uh, to see that, we look at how does this sharp image transform into this blurred image. So that's kind of the forward problem. That's somehow what happened really in nature. We have the original, we have the original scene, we have the sharp picture, but what we take is the blurred image. So this is something that happens in nature. So this is a forward problem, as I would call it in physical terms. Now, going back from this blurred image to the sharp image, this is something that I cannot do in nature. So uh, that would be the inverse problems. So, so uh, with respect to the definition that I gave in the first part, it's clear what the, what the forward and the inverse problem would be. Okay, uh, what would be a nice mathematical formulation for that? Well, let's look at the original image. How do we get at the second image from the first one? Now, it seems that all the pixels over here are somehow spread out. So um, it seems that the uh, brightness values uh, of the image are somehow moving outside in all directions. And uh, if that happens, then well, what you get is exactly this over here. OK, from the definition that or from the description that I just gave, so everything is spreading out in all directions, equally in all directions in time, um, it's quite obvious which differential equation would describe that process. Uh, if you've ever been in mathematical modeling or partial differential equations, you will immediately see, okay, the diffusion equation is the one that, that describes this. 
Okay, so uh, let's look at the diff uh, at the um, at the diffusion equation. Um, the diffusion equation is whoops, uh, it's over here. Uh, U t is sigma times uh, is is the uh, divergence of sigma times the gradient of u. And oh, I didn't give you, uh, I didn't tell you what u actually is. U is a function. Uh, can I write here? Uh, I think I think I, u is a function uh, in two variables, u of t and x. T uh, and u of t and x would describe the well, the uh, the state of the image at some time, right? At time zero, this this would be the sharp image. At time t larger than zero, the the pixels tend to spread out, so uh, they give they give us the state of the image at some later point. I think it's uh, uh, the the easiest thing will be uh, I will just uh, show this to you. Um, this is the sharp image, and if we uh, use the image that we just had as the starting point at the initial value for um, for the for a diff uh, for a diffusion equation. Then what happens? It slowly gets blurred, and uh, we end up with the image that we had above. Okay, so let's test that. So at time t equals to zero, uh, we have the image over here. Uh, it's in color. I realize I'm, I made something wrong. It should be in black and white, but you you know you have the idea. Okay, let me. And I hope that you can see that what the diffusion equation does is it takes the original image. And then transforms it into something that's get, that gets more and more blurry. Okay, so our process of taking the photo of um, of a scene with the wrong distance with the wrong distance in the camera can be described as the final point over here. Uh, in uh, of this of the state uh, of the fun of the function u to which uh, that was u that was um, that was generated by solving the differential equation, right? So we can actually describe that process using the diffusion equation. Okay, so uh, now let me go back. So what is what was the direct problem? The direct problem was taking the um, the blurred image. Now, with this mathematical description, what we're actually doing is we are solving the diffusion equation in time with, time, with uh, t larger than zero. Okay, now what would happen if we were to go back from the blurred image to the, uh, to the original, to the sharp image? Well, we would have to solve the diffusion equation backwards in time, right? And so this is again something, uh, I mean, the, the terms um, forward problem and inverse problem already come up in the same sense as in the first example. So that's nice. And we fear that we will have also exactly the same problems as before. And um, so we will assume there will probably not, uh, it will probably not be guaranteed that this going back so that operator from going back from the blurred image to the sharp image will be well defined. This is point one. And we will fear that it's not going to be uh, certain that, um, um, that this operator is continuous. So it might be that small errors in the measurement of the blurred image will lead to large errors in uh, the derivation of the sharp image. Okay, um, that, uh, but that's something now that we can easily look at mathematically. And now this is what I'm going to do, and I hope that this works. So I put this away, and I already have this one, inverse problem for the diffusion equation. And please have in mind that uh, de-blurring that, uh, that I just uh, introduced, this is the application that I really have in mind for this one. Uh, for simplicity, I will not do this in 2D, so I will not do this uh, with an image, but uh, I will do this in 1D. So we have the following problem. Uh, we are looking for a function u that goes from 0 to t uh, times omega 
to R. And uh, omega in the example that I had would probably be So after exactly 10 minutes, uh, my recording stopped again, but this time I noticed. Um, so I will have to look into that a little more deeply, but uh, so I have to restart at some point now. Okay, we're looking at, a, uh, at an inverse problem for the diffusion equation. And uh, we're looking for a function u that maps from in time from zero to capital T times omega to the real numbers, where well, the real numbers, what we, uh, we interpret as gray levels in the image. And for the image, uh, omega would be something like the unit square. And for simplicity, we just look at the unit interval from zero to one. Okay, um, then we start with the sharp image. Uh, we first want to describe the direct problem. So we start, start off with the sharp image and we have that u of zero and x should be u zero of x where u zero of x is the sharp image. And, um, or in the, um, the, the original image for the line. And then we apply the diffusion equation to this. So we have something like ut is uxx. So ut is the Laplacian of u, but it's 1d. And uh, I already left out that parameter sigma that I had in the slide before. We've said just set sigma to 1. And I need some kind of boundary value and uh, to make this unique. And what I use is simply directly. So u of t and zero is u of t and one. And this is zero. Okay, um, so I'm, I don't wanna discuss whether this makes any sense with the boundary value theorem. Um, this is just an example. Okay, so we now have the diffusion equation. Um, we have the original image at the beginning at time t equals zero. Um, we let we compute the solution. That's what I did in the animation. And for t larger than zero, we get a sequence of images uh, which which uh, finally deliver to us at time t uh, equals to capital T the blurred image that we saw in the slide. Okay, so what we're interested in is the mapping from u0, or if you want, from u of t equals to, oops, excuse me, wrong way, u of 0 and x, this is the original image, to the final image. Now, this is the direct problem compute the blurred image from the original image. Okay, good. And we believe that this is continuous if you've been to partial differential equations, then um, provided u0 lies in a decent space, uh, there will be a solution, there will be a unique solution, and uh, also that solution will depend continuously on the uh, original image. So, um, we have that this is a direct problem. And in our sense, it's well posed because it satisfies all of Dirichlet's conditions. Now let's go for the, uh, to the operator that we're really interested in. So we would like to go from the blurred image to the sharp image. And now nothing is actually can actually be said because if you change the direction of t, I mean usually we have ut equals to uxx. Okay, now but now we change the direction of time. Okay, so we're going backwards. So the diffusion equation in this case is no longer ut equals uxx, but what we're really looking at is now minus ut is uxx. 
And if you've been to partial differential equations, then you will immediately see not too much can actually be said about uh, this equation. Um, it, it, um, um, not too much can actually be said about this equation, right? So it's not certain, it's not sure that any of these conditions that I have up there actually hold. It's not clear that this is uh, solvable. It's not clear that it's uniquely solvable. And it's also not clear whether the function, whether the final result, this u of zero and x depends uh, continuously on u of capital T and x. And that final point that uh, it might not be continuous, uh, I will demonstrate just uh, very simply. Um, usually when we look at the analysis of inverse problems, our main tool is in fact the Fourier transform. And uh, the Fourier transform, um, so I will repeat everything about Fourier transforms. I will even have a chapter, I think, about Fourier transforms because they are so important for us. Um, but I will do it in a very simple way here. When we do the Fourier transform, we're actually looking at fun function spaces in a special basis. And uh, that special basis is just the tri trigonometric functions. I hope so. So we're looking at sine and cosine, right? Okay, uh, so what we're interested in in this case is how does that system react to, um, to initial values that are sine or cosine? Okay, so uh, I will look, just look at a special case. I will look at the special case u0 of x is sine of k times pi times x. And uh, I leave k completely open, except for the fact, of course, that it should be an integer number. Okay, for u0 equals the sine of chi pi x, I can easily solve the differential equation. And uh, I can just write it down. I think uh, you can do it by hand and probably you will also you will do it in the homework anyway. The solution for this one is u of t and x. Uh, this is, um, <laughs> what really is it? Okay, e to the minus k square pi square T sine of k times pi times x. Okay, uh, let me just check that. It actually satisfies uh, the differential equations. Of course, ut, if I, if I differentiate this one with respect to t, I get minus k square, pi square, and everything stays. So this is minus k square, uh, k square pi square times u. And what is the second derivative with respect to x? Okay, uh, first of all, we get uh, sine co second derivative of the sine is minus the sine. Um, and uh, we get the factor k pi, k pi twice. So uxx is also minus k square pi square times u. Okay, so the solution is given uh, by uh, e to the minus k square pi square t times sine of k pi x. Okay, that's nice. Um, now, uh, let's look at the final image. What is the final image that we will get using the sine as an initial value? That's u of capital T and x. And that's e to the minus k square pi square t sine of k pi x. Okay. And you already see this one gets smaller over time and quickly over time. It gets exponentially smaller. And even the, uh, the, um, the parameter that's uh, in front of the t over here is open, right? Uh, let me so, so this k over here, I can even choose to be arbitrarily large. If this was open, this would just k was just uh, had to be a natural number. That's everything. But I can choose it as large as I want. So this one goes exponentially fast, very very fast to zero. Okay, good. Um, now let's assume we are doing 
we we are not getting the initial value right. So U0 isn't complete, isn't correct. We, have, we make a small measurement error. Uh, and uh, the small measurement error is um, we're getting the size of that function wrong. Well, we're getting the size of the size of the sign wrong. So let's assume we measure U, U0 tilde of X is not sine of chi pi x, but we measure something like one plus epsilon sine of chi pi x. The error is very, very small that we make if epsilon is small. So the, uh, the, um, the error that we have here is on the order of epsilon because the sign is between one, minus one and one. Okay, so this is a small error in U0. So what is the Result. What, what is the error in the resulting uh, in the resulting blurred image? U t tilde of x would be something like well, one plus epsilon. I mean, it's it's all linear, right? So one uh, one plus epsilon e to the minus k square pi square t sine of k pi x. Okay, so uh, we have the correct, so this is the correct solution. This is the distorted solution, which uh, we've generated with uh, initial values with a very small error. And what you see, of course, is the difference is epsilon times e to the minus k square pi square capital T sine of k pi x. Okay, sine, as I said, is between minus one and one. E to the minus k square pi square capital T goes, is, is very, very small and can be made arbitrarily small using that parameter k. So um, it will definitely be smaller than one. That's uh, the, uh, the, the factor will be smaller than one that epsilon is multiplied with. So in fact, the resulting error in the distorted image in the blurred image will be smaller than the uh, image in uh, um, than the original image. So we will get even get uh, a measurement error that gets smaller and even exponentially smaller, right? I mean, this is going to this uh, e to the minus k square pi square t is going to be more or less zero, right? So more or less, the, um, the measurement error in the forward problem goes away, which sounds excellent. Right, we are, no matter how, um, even if we have, even if we have the original image completely wrong, um, that error goes to zero. So uh, the final result in the forward problem will be okay. Right, sounds good. But the problem is, <laughs> what does that mean for the inverse problem? For the inverse problem, this means that we might have two completely different images which give more or less exactly the same result because both go to zero at some point, right? So we have completely different images and they give us more or less the same result. And as soon as the resulting image is smaller than our measurement error, is the difference between these images is smaller than our measurement error, we will never be able to differentiate between these two original images. Uh, mathematically, this can be very simply seen. I mean, we used to have, let me take a different color now. Wow. We used to have the diffusion equation ut is uxx, and we could immediately give the solution for that. Okay, now we have the diffusion equation. Oh, I love these colors. Um, now we have the diffusion equation with a negative sign. Okay, what does that mean for our solution? Well, the minus sign up here goes away. Oh, I even have a colored. No, but it doesn't do anything. Okay. <laughs> ah, it freezes everything. That's great. Okay, so. Well, that's, I was almost done, right? 
So it almost worked. So let me try again. I think uh, with that image is lost, I will not do it again. Let's see. Okay, it seems that everything is now lost. You know, that's why I'm testing the equipment beforehand. Let's see if my image is coming up at some point. If not, I will just tell you what happened. Maybe I should do that right now. Um, it's quite obvious what happened. Uh, you can probably go back to the slide that I just had. And uh, of course, if the sign, if we change the sign in the uh, in the diffusion equation, then the minus sign in uh, in the exponential goes away, and it's instead of e to the minus k square, we have e to the ah, that's empty. No, wow. Uh, yeah, more or less, that's what I had. So um, I will not try again the, the rainbow pen. So let's see if this works. So instead of the diffusion equation, we're now looking at this distorted diffusion equation with the minus sign. And of course, it's immediately clear what happens to our to our solution, the minus sign goes away. And instead, we now have e to the k square pi square capital, uh, capital T. So that means errors get larger by, get larger exponentially. And also here, the k is arbitrary large. So uh, um, the errors that we make in the measurement are amplified by an arbitrarily large number. And that definitely means that our um, our problem, our operator that maps from the blurred image to the sharp image is discontinuous. And uh, that means it at least violates uh, Hadamard's condition number three. So this is an improperly posed problem. And that's the last thing I'm now going to write down. So this is the inverse problem going from the final image to from the blurred image to the sharp image is discontinuous is the inverse problem and that means it's ill posed and so that's what it is okay uh as i said you would probably do this analysis correctly mathematically correctly in uh, the first lecture and uh, the first homework and I think I will spend uh, the first one or two lectures just introducing you to uh, several real applications and uh, uh, some real experiments that we will be using as examples over all of the, uh, the lecture, uh, mainly concerning medical imaging, medical applications, and also some real life applications. And uh, well, I'm actually looking forward to that. So I hope you are, and I particularly hope that the equipment will do better next time. So hopefully see you on Monday. The Zoom link for this conference is in the LearnWeb.